they, for sure. And, and I think it's for all the reasons you know is that Sam Hinkie and the 76ers are a little unpredictable. I mean, conventional wisdom says D'Angelo Russell is going to be the number three pick, but you've got Chris Depps Porzingis, who's an incredibly interesting talent. And we know that Sam Hinkie's not overly interested in good. He's looking for great. And great could be Porzingis, could be Mario Herzonia. So until the Sixers come off the board, we don't really know what the Knicks are going to do. You know, the narrative around the Knicks is if Towns is gone and Okafor's gone and Russell's gone, they may trade the number four, and that will shake up the rest of the draft. So absolutely, the Sixers sitting really in kind of the control position because if they do take D'Angelo Russell, they could shake up the rest of it. Steve, let's take a look at some of the things that are dropping today about the 76ers. One, Boston and Philly, Marcus Smart, 16-28 for Nerlens Noel, and three, it almost sounds ridiculous to even ask you that. Would you agree? Yeah, that's not a deal the Sixers are going to do, but this is what Boston knows, is that Sam's going to listen because Sam listens. He listens to everybody and evaluates everything, and there is a price into which everyone is tradable, but I don't think that the assets we're talking about from Boston are very good. Um, It just allows Philly to kind of swing a few more times, but Philly's got plenty of picks this year. They They don't need a whole lot considering how much they're holding on to in the second round. Another possibility, uh, then talking to Portland, about moving two seconds, 35 and 38, up to 23 for Portland. Does that make sense for Philly? It might, because I think there's a couple of talents that could be there when you talk about 23 that won't be there later. And this is a team that has cap space and has roster room. So, you know, picking up the best available talent becomes kind of the goal and I think we've seen that you know look there's it's bad to bring six rookies to camp it you can't have six guys who don't know where the bathroom is yet you won't get practice <laughs> done um so if you really want to make progress you do have to kind of be smart about how many young guys you are going to bring because it's really hard to kind of gain any momentum and you look at what Utah went through last year so many young guys couldn't figure it out first couple of months are bad next thing you know the season gets away from you you find your groove and it's you've lost too many games to matter and you know and Philly's kind of in that same boat if you bring in too many young guys and I think that's where some of these second round draft picks can be greased to kind of slide something that involves a veteran move something that involves maybe another team this is where Philadelphia and Sam Hinkie become kind of the deal makers or at least the deal consummators because they have so many assets they can throw into the discussion yeah that last one came from Alex Kennedy from Basketball Insiders we're talking to Steve Kyler over at Basketball Insiders he also mentions that 35 38 and possibly more Philadelphia would have to give to get themselves back in the first round but Steve we know that they have a lot of assets How do you read into how they can use the picks that they own in next year's draft? Because, correct me if I'm wrong, the Sixers have the possibility of having four first-round picks next year. This has been the plan all along. You know, when Sam Hinkie came in, he sat down with ownership, and they said, how good do we want to be? And ownership said, we don't want to be good, we want to be great. And the key to great is getting as many assets as possible. And when you look at how did – the Houston Rockets get James Harden. It was because they had a lot of assets. So you're seeing already there's dysfunction brewing with the Sacramento Kings and DeMarcus Cousins. If you're going to pry away an all-star, you're going to need future picks. You're going to need those first-round draft picks. So the fact that you've got some talent on board, the fact that you'll get more talent this year, and that you've got very attractive pieces next year, and there are some really interesting players you know, projecting for the 2016 draft when you start talking about Dragon Bender, a seven-foot international guy, Ben Simmons, who could be one of the best college players in the country. Um, you know, there are some really interesting prospects out there as well. So if you're one of these teams that can't get into the top five this year, you certainly could probably get into the top five next year with one of those assets Philly's holding on to. Right. So does that sound like something Sam Hankey could package? You know, because there is a report out there that the Sixers would move up to go get D'Angelo Russell. I mean, I guess they would have to move into that two spot to do so, Uh, but would one of those picks next year be something that they could use to make some noise in this draft? Well, I don't think that you're going to give away – I don't think you're going to get into the number two without giving up the number three. So the, the scenario, of course, being able to move to two, get two and three, and call it a draft, I don't think that's going to happen. So, you know, the narrative becomes can you get to two and you know, maybe 11 or or 15, and you're coming out with two really good pieces. I don't think 
the L.A. Lakers are going to take D'Angelo Russell. I think the Sixers know that the L.A. Lakers are not going to take D'Angelo Russell. Um, I think the idea of moving up one spot and what it's going to cost you with the Lakers probably is more than it's worth. Steve, there were some reports uh, conflicting whether Russell would want to play in Philadelphia. What do you know about his desire to be a Sixer? Well, he told us at the Combine that he had met with the Philadelphia 76ers and they had mapped out for him what a career path looks like for him in Philadelphia. And he really liked what he heard. He was very excited about the opportunity to maybe be a Sixer. Um, But then, of course, there was the workout that didn't happen and was he sick and was he not sick. You know, I talk to people on both sides of this, uh, people that are in Russell's camp, people that are in the 76ers camp, and they all said the same thing. The kid got sick during a workout in L.A., got to Philadelphia and was really sick and didn't feel like he was going to put his best on the floor, and everyone agreed it was better for him to reschedule. He rescheduled, he came in, had a great workout, a great meeting, crushed it on the floor, and I think that's what moved Chris. Chris Porzingis out of the number three discussion because if you remember two weeks ago everybody in the country was saying Porzingis was the guy Porzingis is the guy and now we're back talking about Russell because that worked out and, and that meeting did go so well his camp wanted it very clear that D'Angelo has no hesitations about being a Philadelphia 76er if they want to draft talk with Steve Kyler from Basketball Insiders at Steve Kyler NBA uh, at, at, for for your money, Steve, separate Russell and Moutier. What separates those two for you that somebody would like Russell more than Moutier, especially the Sixers at three? Well, I think with Moutier, you get a more physical player, a more attacking player. You know, he is a downhill guard that gets to the front of the rim. He's very aggressive that way. Not a great shooter. Not necessarily known as a passer or a playmaker. And I think that we kind of went through this already in Philly with Michael Carter-Williams that, you know, not being an outside shooter just decimates what your game plan is when you got big guys. So I don't know that the appeal of Moody is as great for Philadelphia as D'Angelo Russell. Now, D'Angelo is not going to kill the, the three-point contest in the NBA anytime soon but he is a much more prototypical point guard. And I think more so than anything, we know what D'Angelo Russell is. There's a whole college basketball season of game film. There's relationships with teammates. There's adversity against bigger, stronger opponents. You know what he is coming in. Where in with Moody going to China, didn't play the whole season, had some injuries. He's kind of a reclusive personality. Very focused at what he does, has a great work ethic. I don't think you're going wrong with either guy, but if you're saying this is going to be the face of our franchise, the guy we're going to roll out and, and make the leader of our team, I think D'Angelo Russell's probably the better fit, but not by a ton. All right, Steve, 19 hours ago you tweeted, it looks like Towns 1, Okafor 2, Russell 3. I know a lot of things change. Do you still believe that? And that's what we're hearing. Um, it does seem like it'll be Towns, Okafor, Russell. But again, like I said, when you're dealing with Sam Hinkie, you know, get, you put the helmet on. It could go any way. You know, and that's an interesting thing. Because of the Embiid stuff, do you think anything has changed for Philadelphia? Or do you think that nothing was has anything to do with Embiid, what they do on Thursday night? Well, I think you're still looking for great. And I think that, look, if, if uh, Jalil Okafor is on the board at three... I think you're still looking at Jalil look for regardless. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that you've got two big guys already doesn't mean you have your big guy. Yeah. You've got two big guys. Let's bring them all to camp, see who the best one is, trade off the ones that don't fit. You know, that's the way this works. And, you know, I think that because you've got a guy in a chair doesn't mean you don't look at a guy who could fit that chair better. So I don't necessarily believe that anything that is on the Sixers roster would preclude Sam from from making the best pick for the future. But I do think that when you start to look at really what's likely to be there, do you go Joel Embiid? Do you go D'Angelo Russell? Do you go Porzingis? I think Por- or, or D'Angelo Russell's the best fit of those three guys. Uh, Steve Kyler, Basketball Insiders, at Steve Kyler NBA on Twitter as we get closer to the NBA draft. We'll see what other Rumors come out in the next 24 hours when we come back on tomorrow's show. Uh, But for now, that's all with Steve. We thank you so much, Steve. Anytime, my man.